Hi, this is the Sunday evening update on Tropical Storm Isaias, which continues to move north-northwestward parallel to the Florida coastline today. Steady as she goes in terms of the storm's intensity and structure. We have maximum winds about 70 miles per hour at the surface, and those maximum winds are occurring in an area to the northeast of the center, which is down here. And you can kind of see the center spinning away here on the southwestern side of this thunderstorm blob, which has continued to the northeast of the center. And this has been a very consistent structure of the storm since this morning. And we had some of that convective bursting that we were talking about yesterday. Some of these thunderstorms uh, collapsed a little bit overnight last night, and then this morning refired. And we've had a very consistent blob of thunderstorms throughout the day today, very persistent. And if we look at how that looks on radar here, this is from Martinus and Bomb sites at FSU. We'll see that the surface center is somewhere in this region and the convection is off to the northeast, that big thunderstorm blob. This is a nice steady down shear left orientation. Most of the wind shear is out of the west northwest direction here and the convection is rotated perpendicular to that on the left hand side of that shear vector. So this is a very steady storm in the sense that its structure has not changed very much and uh, this continues to gradually slide up the coast. Exactly how close the circulation gets to the coast will very much depend on whether this conve convection collapses at any point, because right now the storm's motion is really a combination of the two layers of the shearing flow, because we have strong uh, west-northwestern or east-southeasterly east steering at the low levels trying to push the storm on shore, and then we have very strong westerly winds aloft trying to push the storm offshore. And right now, those two are offsetting almost entirely. So we have a very slow motion to the north-northwest as a net result. But if this convection collapses, the storm becomes shorter in effect. The vortex becomes less deep, and then it would take a turn toward the left, more toward the coast. So we'll be watching very uh, carefully for that to see if some of these stronger winds might come ashore at points farther north along the Florida coastline and for the Georgia coastline. Uh, where this will help determine how close this gets to that bend in the southeast U.S. coast. Uh, we have so far thankfully kept most of the strongest winds in this deep convection offshore and the heaviest rains. We have seen tropical storm force winds along the Treasure Coast though in central Florida today and these are gradually creeping northward toward the Space Coast and points farther north. So although we have not seen the heaviest weather, we are getting windy conditions that could cause power outages and issues. And thankfully, only spritzing rain um, scattered showers here and there on this west side, which continues to be rather dry because of that shear, and we're not getting the flooding rains on shore really right now. Now, we'll see if they try to rotate around. Again, if the center gets a little bit closer to the coast up here, and it gets a little bit better organized, and we get some of that rain more onto the northern side, then we might start scraping the coast with a little more flooding potential. So we'll have to monitor that. But right now, not expecting the biggest flash flooding threat right now for most of the Florida coastline as this comes up, which is, of course, good news. Now, as we continue to go forward in time here, a big question will be whether this can ever get stronger again. It's been pretty steady today. And again, on this GFS plot with the upper level flow, you can see all of that shearing flow out of the west coming into the system, which is centered here on the model right now. And so you can see this westerly flow coming in. And again, there's going to be a short window of opportunity during which this shear will become less hostile for Isaias as it moves northward. If we uh, move this plot forward just a couple of hours, you'll see that as soon as it nears northeast Florida, this is valid for uh, morning on Monday, Monday morning, this stream of air across the Gulf becomes a little bit lighter and we start to see this stream take over uh, with this big trough coming into the eastern part of the country. And it's during this time, starting Monday morning, and then you can see Monday afternoon, if I go forward one more time step, that we can start seeing a little bit less shear. It's not going to go away, but we're going down from, say, 30 knots of shear to about 20 knots of shear or so, and it's less hostile type of shear. In addition, we have an entrance region to a jet streak developing north of the system where this air is accelerating into this jet that may provide some favorable baroclinic forcing 
for the storm as it is approaching uh, the coastal Carolinas. And it's at this point that a brief period of reintensification is possible. We'll have to keep an eye on that. It really depends on how healthy it looks right when it's getting uh, past the Florida Georgia border to see if it has a good launching point from which to reattain hurricane status. But that would not be out of the question. And for that reason, we do have some hurricane watches along this portion of coastline, which you'll see here on the official NHC track map, which shows that motion bending toward the northeast and into the Carolinas at this point, probably somewhere between Charleston, South Carolina, and Wilmington, North Carolina. That's the current consensus idea in pink here. You might be able to make out that um, hurricane watch that is in effect. They do not forecast intensification before landfall, but again, I would say be prepared for a possible hurricane as I could see that occurring uh, if the system is healthy when it's uh, passing the Florida Georgia border right about here. It has a chance to organize a little bit more. So be prepared for that. Either way, though, we're going to be talking about maximum winds, probably in excess of 60 miles per hour either way, and the potential for all the issues that come along with that. For example, storm surge that for now is limited to probably one to three feet forecast up through the Georgia South Carolina line, but then potentially two to four feet in areas of South Carolina and North Carolina closer to the landfall location where the center will in fact come ashore unlike in Florida where it has stayed offshore. And then potential for surge uh, farther north along the coast as the system moves in like this and we have the potential for the onshore flow on the north side uh, to continue coming into Chesapeake Bay and the Outer Banks of North Carolina. And of course we have the rainfall uh, which will bring the possibility of flash flooding and a pretty high chance of it, 20 to 50 percent according to WPC here, going from near and west of the landfall point as we head inland. Remember, as we talked about yesterday, the maximum in rainfall is going to shift from where it is now, which is to the east of the track. Remember, right now we have the center here. Most of the rain is off to the east. That's going to change because of this interaction with this upper level trough here. So we're going to start moving the storm inland, and then all the rain is going to shift to along and northwest of the track. And so that's why we see all this inland flooding potential on this outlook. So through uh, the Carolinas, Virginia, and the Mid-Atlantic, and even up into New England, expect a swath of heavy rain and the potential for flash flooding. That will probably be the greatest risk to uh, the Mid-Atlantic and New England states, although some of the wind with this as it moves up could, of course, cause power outages in the great populous areas of the big cities. So do keep an eye on that and uh, the impacts that are expected. Again, this is not you know, a major hurricane, but it is something that is producing hazards. And those hazards can be life-threatening if you're in the wrong place, if you're in a flood-prone area, or you're on the beach when you shouldn't be, etc. So these are things to keep in mind as the storm comes up the majority of the eastern seaboard and brings uh, hazards with it all the way up uh, the coastal region. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.